I love you, bro. Yeah, stop it. Beer Googles. You're incredibly strange. Thank you. Muy strange. Danke schön. Danke schön. Darling. Danke schön. Danke schön. Did that make your list? Karaoke. Did that make your list? Yes. Ferris Bueller's Day Off soundtrack. (laughs) Oh my god. Fucking Ferris Bueller's Day Off. God damn it. Fuck. That was in my top 20. Was it? I had to take it off. But you didn't even do give honor. I didn't even hear honorable mention. All right. Yeah, because I had it at 15. It was in my 20. Oh, you should have given me the rest of them, bro. I do. I put it down to fifteen. Oh man, bro, bro, bro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, bro, Tito welcome chip. to Beer Googles. Another episode with Christopher, 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 and this guy, Jack Mark, Jack Mark. Yeah. Welcome to the movies and the music. Okay, so today we're going to talk about. Well, we went deserted island last time. We're still there, and we did. Yeah, we're still stuck. We have there. not escaped. We are going to get tossed. If people know what's best for them, they should get rid of us now. But the truth is, we did movies draft style because we have a lot of similar. But we didn't. We only crossed particle streams once, and it didn't work out very well. Well, that's because you were nice, bro. No, we right. wouldn't. No one would have stepped on anyone else. The rest of us, literally, nothing else was in there. Except that was for just aliens, the linchpin. Dude. I know, bro. It's a okay, let's stop one. talking about movies. But now we're going to do music. But we're not going to do draft style because we're so we have such different tastes in music that we thought we would just. Give 20 albums that we would take. I would so, not step on your Billy Joel. Here are the stipulations, sir. Yes. 10 albums. No greatest hits. You can have two live albums on the list and no more than two albums by the same artist. Okay. So that I hope that clarifies itself. Because I said yes. last time, I would love you to tell me your first album sir i sure i i like to i do need to caveat my list because i was trying i, I mentioned this to you earlier but i i need to clarify that um i was trying to make my list mainstream yeah. and not metal and it worked out very poorly and i spent several hours <laughs> trying to make a non-metal Top ten. So oh, sorry, Lopper give me a was shot, on it. fucker. Um, no spilling of the juice of the gods. Uh, I I went through the Billboard dot com top five hundred albums of all time, and I thought, okay, Billy Idol, uh, The Fix, um, Duran Duran. Okay, um, I, I'm a big fan of Susie the Banshees and Echo and the Bunnymen and these obscure. Hooters, bro. Yeah. Um, they danced. The uh, the 80s alternative sound from the, um, the UK, as I've mentioned previously, I'm a fan of. And I, and I don't... They all have two or three good songs, but not a good album, in my, in my opinion. Right. So after a couple of hours of trying to figure out a list, I was like, yeah, fuck this. I don't okay. fucking care. I just don't... I don't fucking care. <laughs> to which you sent me a text and was like, I don't want to do this one. I said, all right, let's pick another one. And then you sent back and said, no, we're good. Because you, you got into yourself and said, I'm going to pick the song, the albums I want. Right. Totally. So I apologize to the non-metal heads because there's like eight metal albums. <laughs> there's seven metal albums on there. And I do have some honorable mentions in the non-metal category. But... Is that like the Grammys and the non-metal category? In the non-metal category, non-metal well, everything's in the non-metal finals. category at the fucking Grammys. Oh yeah, we will. We shall never speak of the Grammys or the hall. What's it called? The fucking yeah, boogers on your microphone. I think I got a booger on my mic. <laughs> I was picking my nose with it. Do not put the mic in your fucking nose. So the oh, I can um, make it fit, bro. I can make it fit. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Good. That got weird. <laughs> <laughs> that escalated quickly. The, um, the Ron Burgundy, God damn it, Anchorman. 
God, you're it's still stuck happen. on the movie I know, thing, bro. I'm fucked for the rest of my so life. So the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Grammys, we shall never speak of. So, Except for 1978 Starland Vocal Band winning Best New Artist. No. And then you watch who they beat and then go, what? <sighs> anyway, yeah. Again, do we want to have a podcast about that just to fucking lose our fucking minds? I need a mind to lose, bro. Okay. Again, we shall never speak of the Grammys or the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Okay? Next. Okay. Yes? That is all. That is not all. Back to you, sir. Chuck Mark. Okay. Uh-oh. Stuff's being So, dropped. basically, this is the deal. You are going on a deserted island. Get the fuck out. You got 10 seconds to grab your 10 favorite album or just rattle them off. Boom. Go. That's where we're at. Okay. Yes. So, with that said, sir, yes. let us start with... Yes. Numero uno. Yes. For you. Yes. Go. Uh, oh, I already drank it, bro. Shit. Salud. Should have waited, bro. I'm uh, the greatest live metal album of all time. 1985, recorded at the Long Beach Arena, Iron Maiden Live After Death, where the... The most famous metal phrase ever recorded, scream for me, Long Beach. Every metalhead knows that. Every metalhead knows scream for me, Long Beach. Every metalhead knows that. Speak, check mark, go. Is, is that the equivalent of play freebird, man? For the not, for the, yes. for the jackasses in this house? <laughs> He's like, play a free bar is, is Scream for Me, San... Which, which one was it? Long Beach. Long Beach. Scream for Me, Long Beach. Is that like the... Is that the like, play some Skinner, man? Yes. Kind of? Every metalhead knows Scream for Me, Long Beach. I did not know this. Right, because you're not a metalhead, so I don't right. expect you to know. My head's like, I've got a metal plate. Ooh, that's nice. Like, it, and like, like right about here, like magnets. Dunk. Whoa, that's, yeah, that's hot. I don't, but I'm not a metalhead. Right, you know, I was, you know, I know you know a couple of Pantera songs, but that's it. You I know? also know a couple of Iron Maiden songs, but that's about yeah. it. Everyone knows "Run to the Hills." That's it, which is on that album. And I know "Ram It Down" from my that's previous conversation. Judas Priest, not Iron Maiden. Oh yeah, totally different. I was just fucking with you because yeah, that's, that's okay. Little, that's, that's little, oh, I can't do it. It's you. Yeah, you did. You did it really well. Oh. <laughs> I can't. It does, it's not working. It looks like it's you're, not working. you're crossing the streams. Last Boy Scout, bro. Damn it. That's going to be on my best. That's going to be one of my best worst albums. We're doing best worst movie, by the way. Also, we're going to have those. I don't want to. Oh, but ones that you can't not watch that you know are bad. Come on. Let's be honest. Okay. So Iron Maiden live. After death. Af life after death live or live after death? After death. In fact, Beautiful. I wore the t-shirt for that album during the catholics podcast it's the oh. picture of eddie with the blue background he's getting oh. struck by lightning and he's going like this and i had that um he's got the long hair some eddie the iron maiden mascot sometimes he's bald sometimes he has hair i had that picture up in my senior high school locker for the year and i wore that specifically in tyson's honor because his locker was just 50 feet from mine our senior year some years i saw him at, our lockers some years i didn't based upon whatever fucking lottery they fucking gave out lockers yeah it but was a different every year that so. year he was i saw him every day at our lockers and um and some in classes some not classes right but every every year every day that year i uh i had my that that was my locker picture that year was that that album cover because they released that album what constitutes eddie having hair or not having hair it depends upon the artist uh derek oh uh, Derek. Is it different artists or the no, same artist? No, same guy has drawn Eddie mood. since 1978. Interesting. So number one. Yes, sir. Live after death. And this is Scream for Me. Scream for Me Long, Long Beach. Beach. So as in Long Beach, California. Long Beach, California. Long Beach, California. Long Beach Arena. So much drama in the LBC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of hard being Snoop D O double G. It, yeah. It's nothing to do with him. I, I didn't think so. All right. Well, Go. So we did live albums, and live albums allowed us uh, the afford afforded us the ability to do basically a greatest hits in a way, yes, in sir. a weird way, because a lot of times bands come through, they play their live stuff, their live stuff happens to be a conglomeration. With that in mind, I 
Bare naked ladies, bro. Rock spectacle. It's like the weird one where they just do. It's the it's up in Canada and it's just recorded and the the audio is amazing. The harmonies are great. The music's good and they're funny. They're just entertaining. So I could like listen to that in the background all the time. So it's one of those ones where like you'll find myself singing along with it at times and it's just weird stuff. They're goofy. They're quirky. And that's a great live album. So I went with that because I didn't think they, to your point, they don't have an album on their own that holds on its own. So this has like kind of all their good stuff. And it works really well, and they really choreograph their their concerts are what they're known for. Kind of like certain bands that you watch are known for their show. Let's be honest, Guar is definitely known for its show more than its <laughs> fucking music. That's a great one, right? I mean, uh, like stupid Guar, right? But Guar's fucking they're, they're so dumb. Know, so, but they're so dumb where what year was that recorded? I'd have to actually you, look just that if you had up. to guess. Give out. I'm you know. gonna say ninety ninety five. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm gonna look it up. And was that you, in uh, their? Was that in their prime? Was that their height? It really was right before they did that one week song that really put them on the. So map. it was before their prime. It was right before that because this was one week, for example, one of their biggest hits, probably recognizable of all time. Okay, isn't yeah, yeah, even yeah. on there. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. So it's prior to that. So I have to do. Uh, I'm gonna have to just look it up because no, I think no, don't do that. Well, I mean, I just need the date, but yeah, to your point, yeah, it's. It was like, I think it was the best version of the cells before they got sold. Like before, in a weird way, like the sellout. The production value increased. Yeah, they became more produced. So you think yeah. they became more radio friendly? Radio friendly for sure. Honed and had to like okay. had to kind of be mainstream, right? If you have a choice, right? There are certain artists who do what they do. Iron Maiden does what they do, yeah. and they're great. There are some guy, some artists that go, we do the album we have to do so we can do the album we want to do. And I think a lot of times in order to be able to afford yourself the luxury of doing your own weird quirky thing, you kind of need that nest egg of art. His, you got to strike where the iron's hot. Of course. Right. So like, yeah. especially with art, like people are fleeting in music. Oh I think. yeah. So absolutely. You could be on top of the world. That money, that needs to be squirreled away. Yeah, Cause abs- you may yes. never have another thing and no one may ever talk about you again. So that's kind of where that was with that. Um, so it was a live album and I had, don't know the exact year. Oh, 86, uh, 96. So I said 95. So 96. Okay. So right after that, 98, 99 was like bare naked ladies one week and alcohol, like a, just they really kind of just took off but this was like their best version of their their geekier true selves okay right yeah i i use ones like you know like an artist who who's single right singer songwriter talks about love right he talks about love and finding a woman then he gets married and he has a kid and now he's talking about his love for his kid and the songs change completely and i don't re- relate because like i'd be the one the single guy looking for love right so i related to that and then when he became a father I didn't relate. So the music kind of, it falls off. Sometimes. You lose it. Yeah. So yeah. In that case, that's like the best them before they really kind of became a little too honed. And then they lost their main guy, one of their two main guys. And after, after that, group, okay. they got huge. Okay. Then they broke off and then it's tough to recapture the magic. Of course. But that night that seemed they they captured it. So I love that. Thanks bro. I love that. I love when they capture the magic. That's just, it's almost irreplaceable you know it is when you that the electricity's in the air yeah. it's palpable i love that when you feel the yeah when, and you can when you're at home or you're in your car or you're listening to your favorite band from your phone to your headphones and you can feel it you can still f- you feel like you're there that night and it's 30 years ago or whenever you know 10 years ago whatever that's amazing i love that i love that when you can feel the electricity that's 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 why I love live shows, love live recordings. Yes. Yeah, and that's the thing is like when you talk about like a Grateful Dead. I'm not a Grateful Dead fan. I'm a vocal guy. I'm not an instrument guy. But Grateful Dead fish, and it's like they got in that zone, and they would play for like hours. And it's like they were in a trance. They were just all. It was like this moving organism that the music didn't conflict. It just all rode together. And that they're all on the same page without just feeling it. Not mm-hmm. they don't know what they're gonna play next. They just felt the presence of that person with like that whole. That's the magic. So it's, it's uh, you can't duplicate it. Once it hits it, like you know when you know when you hit it. 
you know, and you know when you miss it. And then you're like, then you know when you try to manufacture it and it feels as fake as it, as it feels like, as it is manufactured. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost like artificial flavoring. It, it tastes like shit. And you're like, that doesn't taste like a Dude, fucking I strawberry. Love to me. Splenda, shut up. I like grape. Purple. I'm sorry. My favorite flavor is it's purple. purple. Oh, it's so delicious, <laughs> dude. Those are my favorite pop schools, man. <laughs> All right, man. So number two. So you're gonna you're gonna get dropped off an island. Yes. And they they're like, fuck you. Here's your Iron Man. Fucking is it CD MP? I don't even know what we're getting. Who cares? D- fucking records, Eight man. Track, bro. Get my records back. They're gonna fuck the track the grooves up, bro. On an island, you can have it forever. We need Super sand. We need more sustainable digital media, ladies and gentlemen. So we can have MP3 this. three discs. Yeah. And we, so we Sony disc mans. Yes. No, the disc man, the mini disc, the, the little fucking yes. sleeve thing with the micro discs. Ooh, laser, whatever it takes. <laughs> Always back on the laser discs. I'm a douchebag. I'm still shot first on my version. So no more movie talk, sir. All right, bro. Unless you have a movie album, unless you have a movie soundtrack on your list. I had one and I nixed it. Okay. But it might make it its way back. Two on my list is, I have two fa- two of my that I think are the best albums of all time. This is a slightly different version of that one of those two. It's uh, Queen's Reich, Operation Mind Crime came out in '88, and I think that's one of the two best albums of all time. It's a it's a it's a story album, concept album. So it's a story of three people and their how they interact together. And it's about a nun who used to be a prostitute and a, a guy named Dr. X and he's trying to overthrow a government and this guy who loves the nun and he's working for Dr. X and he doesn't know whether to help him or admit that he's really in love with the nun or not. Very strange. But it's an interesting concept. And the music is phenomenal and Queensryche is an amazing musical band. And I like the story. And the, some of the songs are three minutes and some of them are 11 minutes. So they played that album in its entirety on the Empire Tour in 91. I got to see it live, third row, caught a drumstick, still have it. Amazing. They recorded that show in Madison, Wisconsin in 91. And they released it as Operation Live Crime, which the sound quality is amazing. You can feel the audience and the sound is phenomenal. And that's why I, I you can feel it. Not only is the album great, but the live recording is great. So that's why it's number two to me. Because it's the best of both worlds. One of my favorite albums, recorded in its entirety, recorded live. Go. I also saw Queen's Arc Empire. What's up? In Hershey. Nice. Hershey PA, I believe. Or Screen. I think it was Hershey. Whatever but regardless. I went with my brother. It's a weird thing, but phenomenal show i remember three screens i remember the story what queens Reich is queens Reich is i would argue just because just mentioning them because no one ever does arguably one of the best most underrated bands of all time i think so uh, they are tight they're good yeah they write well it works and live crime was a fucking masterpiece or mind crime was a masterpiece yes. in its own. Cause it was a, literally the story went album. The song went album, to album telling you the story as it goes. The concept was so great. And back. I don't Hello. T- hello Twitter world. Do uh, you know that OJ, back in the you? day? Yeah. Uh, well, the, does the voice fit? Yes, it does. Then, then, well, you can, you can allegedly say it was me. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> Until I try it on. If I try the voice on, it doesn't fit. You must have quit. Uh, yes, sir. But but hello, Twitter. Uh, artists used to do things called albums, which was a whole set of individual songs pushed together into a grouping of songs. Shut up. Yeah, it's crazy. And back in the day, it was very important song placement. You wanted to, if you wanted to create a feeling, because you literally put a side on or put it on and just left it run, right? If you wanted to create a feeling, you had to, you know, build up to a certain point and then come back down. So you'd have like hard, 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 lighter, lighter. Oh, your love song, your ballad. Okay, a little harder, harder, and then back, like, or whatever. However you wanted to tell your story, album plays, and you could hear it like, why is this song after that? It doesn't make sense on the tracks. 
back in the day, though, that a lot of thought was put into that. Pink Floyd, obviously, Dark Side of the Moon, right? Yeah. And all those things, those types of con- concepty kind of things where you're like, hmm. So I, I agree with you. Now, personally, if I were you, I wouldn't have, I love the live part, to your point. But like Mind Crime on its own, you could have, you could have slipped another live album in there. But I love the choice. It's a fucking, and it's, the recording's ridiculous. Shit, I'm only allowed two live albums? Two live, we told this. Fuck. Did you not do this? Bro, did you know? Come on. All right, then I got to withdraw my pick. Why? Can I change my pick? Yeah, can you change the mind crime? Yes. Then let's do mind crime. So my second pick is Operation Mind Crime. <laughs> Fuck. Didn't we talk about that? I, I don't know. We, I wasn't paying bro, attention. Bro, the rules were too live. On, how, do you, how many live are on, do you have on there now? Well, three. Okay. Whew. Okay, so Fuck. we're good. Okay. Well, that's good, bro. Okay, so we're good. We're okay. It'll be okay, man. You still have your music. You still, you still have your music. Dude, I, was, I had heart palpitations. <laughs> We're about called medic. I was just, I like to say palpitations. Oh my God. It's a fun word to say. Starship Troopers. <laughs> God damn it. No more <laughs> movie talk, sir. You know that's happened to the rest of this episode. So, hey, right? let's, let's wrap up. Let's put a bow tie on no, Queen's Rake because oh, sorry. Um, yes. many, I don't consider them a metal Definitely band not a metal because band. they still are played on the hair nation channel on Sirius XM. And I consider them a progress, progressive rock band because they came out of seattle and they they have a lot of music that's not heavy at all so it in my final point about them is their their former singer that was with them for the majority of their career jeff tate um despite his egomaniacism if that's even a word is um in my opinion one of the two best metal or rock singers ever next to ronnie james dio he had professional opera singing training. The guys and his range is phenomenal. He's a phenomenal singer, just Jeff on his own. So I, I think that to your point, they don't get enough credit or credence outside of the rock industry, outside of rock at all. Right. And Je- let's be honest, like, Jet City Woman, Silent Lucidity, yeah, right there. You're not. Those. Well, I'm just saying those are not rock by any me- well, by no. any stretch. I mean, the rock, but they're Woman not, he- they're kind not of, heavy. They're not heavy at all. No, no. like you said, like you were it's talking about the heavy slayer. metal. Thing. Right. It's not metal like that. No. They're they're hair, but they're they're kind I, of hair nation ish. But they're, yeah, but they're they're more progressive. They're yes, more they're the, smoother. The Seattle There's, sound yes. is very present, and they're polished. They're good. Yeah, they're just good. Yeah, this is it. They're tight. Like you said, the word tight. Because grunge, grunge is not right. Well, they're grunge, not they're not no, grunge at all but that's what i'm saying is seattle no, no I'm, but, I'm the, in, that's but, but seattle, seattle has a progressive they, that's where yes. the progressive music usually comes from yeah seattle has a very uh interesting sound musically they they are very influential in certain yes styles correct and, and that's where yes. Queens right came from etc so that underrated for yes sure. correct i'm with you uh where are you at sir number two yes mind crime not you, live you, crime because we because i fucking broke I'm a rule that i broke I thank you. So we clearly stated the state. rules, my friend. I forgot, or I suck, or whatever it is. Okay, so as as your struggle, I could have probably made every live album because I love greatest hits. There were so many that we're going to talk honorable mention that are greatest hits, and that was the biggest thing. Find Should an I only album, like four honorable mention. Find an album that you can listen to pretty much all the way through without like having to skip a track or something. Yeah, that's, that's the not problem. a fucking greatest hits that you don't know or whatever. Right. So on that, in that vein, I did basically do a greatest hits. I did the Eagles hell freezes over live. It has all the Eagles greatest hits versions that are unique in that sound. I saw that concert. What'd you think of it? It was great. I was very impressed. And I'm not a not big an Eagles, Eagles fan. fan. No, I mean I went because the girl I was with wanted to go. Yeah, totally. So no, I was uh, like, all right. Yeah, well, uh, uh, hello, Toto. When Vagina wants you to go, then you go. But I'm not. It's not well, like I'm it was a rap it's show. A, yeah. So I, I, I'm like, <laughs> or you had to hold her purse. Hell, fuck ba-dum-bum. those two things uh, forever. So it was a good show. I was vi- I was very, uh, and they opened with um, Life in the Fast Lane. No. Yeah, yeah probably. The one, the one in they're standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. Oh yeah, they I, opened oh, yeah. that, and I was I'd like, "Take it easy." Th- I was like, "That's really cool." That's fucking awesome. Yeah. So, all of them highly talented individual Absolutely. artists. Absolutely. Yeah. It was very. It was. I was really impressed. Awesome together. It was the first time reu- reuniting, and just the music it in felt it felt so good. 
the way they did it and the just the way they did the whole thing the recorded version obviously is the one that's just so amazing and don henley does like new york minute and like one or two of his other hits what's his so, name who's the other guitar player joe walsh he did um did he do my mom's he does 185 yes that was so cool my Maserati won't eat him. That was cool. But boom, 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 boom. I lost my license and now I came back. It was cool to see Don Haley on the drums. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. I just saw them recently, actually. I saw them on their Hotel California tour. I've never seen them live. I paid an exorbitant amount of money. It was in Exorbitant. Vegas, but we have a poster. Oh, shut they only they only made four hundred posters, ladies and gentlemen. We got three ninety seven, bro. Three ninety seven, bro. Yeah, four from the end. <laughs> but regardless of all of that, I spilled coffee on it this like this earlier this week and almost lost my shit. But then I did hung you it back wipe up. it off. I did. I did the best I could, but coffee. Now it's got character, sir. Character. It's Don Henley's coffee stain. Fuck ladies yeah, and gentlemen. I love character. Um, and the show is fucking phenomenal. They played Hotel California in its entirety. The guy, the, the night man walks out with the album and he shows it to everyone. He puts it down on the record player and he goes, and right as he goes, poof, goes poof, plays the whole thing, right? Then after the first half, because it's an album, right? It played whatever. I think it was Waste of Time. Then there's a Waste of Time reprise on the other side, whatever. A woman kind of like a bellhop, she skips out, flips it and does the same thing. And then it's orchestra only, just lights on like 20 piece orchestra. Really just well done. Just they're they're artists. They're true musicians or artists. They the whole well. They do all it well. So greatest hits album sounds amazing once again. But didn't they have somebody just die? Glenn Fry died. Yeah, so years ago he, no, he like, died before like that. Four or five years ago, right? Somewhat they recently. did, and Vince Gill re replaced. And Vince Gill's voice. But isn't holy that kind of like fucked up? Yeah, but Joe Walsh never, Joe Walsh is an original member, is not an original member. He came in, I think, with Hotel California or the, or the album before, but he wasn't. Yeah, but and he's been there Tim, like 25 years. Right, but neither is Timothy Beachman. There's a lot of members that weren't, they actually had a lot of term, they weren't like a congruent. That's not that was, my point. Uh, oh, sorry. Should they really be the Eagles without Glenn Fry? Ye, yes, Don't, they're allowed because I. It's my opinion that Glenn Fry, it, Glenn Fry, and Don Henley are the Eagles, right? And one of them's gone. Correct. Glenn Fry's son has replaced his dad, so I'm in a lineage way. I, so I not know about and Vince and Gill came him. in and he's vocally. Vince Gill is the best singer of the whole group. He's better than Henley. He's on. When you hear the name Vince Gill, you don't think no because I, I don't know Vince Gill very well. Yeah, I mean I know you don't think much guy. about him. Holy fuck, his voice is amazing. The best of all of them now at 67, whatever he is. He's 67? I, don't look I'm it up. 60, I don't 70. care. I don't but yeah, care. Anyway. I withdraw the question. So what's the question, though? Oh, I, you can't I call don't them the have Eagles. one. Okay, can you call them the Eagles? I would say yes. Kind of like Fleetwood Mac toured without fucking Lindsey Buckingham. Right. Motherfucking Lindsey Buckingham, dude. Right. That's wrong. I agree that it's wrong, but Glenn Fry died. He wasn't kicked out. Right, but when somebody in the band that important dies, yeah. I think the band should go off into the sunset, kind of like Led Zeppelin did. Hey, the greatest drummer ever is gone. The we, new Eagles? I mean, what do you call them? You call them nothing. You don't tour. You fucking pack it in. Really? Yes. After Glenn Fry died? Yes. Glenn Fry or Don Henley well, goes to heaven. That's a great you question. Call it even. Hold on. Can they be the Eagles just playing the music and i'll say it this way the reason i ask what if they haven't made a new album after glenn fry died they shouldn't even tour in my opinion okay this is a dumb I, conversation no i like it i appreciate it. <laughs> oh my god i love you bro no but i get what you're saying but i feel i feel I like i really you're wish the eagles weren't even on your list so i didn't have to get upset oh my god <laughs> i wish they weren't so good so i wouldn't he, uh vince gill's officially 63 years old sir 63 Okay, can we, can we go back? Can we go back? I'm sorry, bro. Hey, hold on. Hold on. I'm not even supposed to be here, Daddy. Okay. Oh, sure, Daddy. It's okay. Oh, you have me. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, let's go. San Diego's high school football rules. I know that does. Go uh, on, Number three, sir. Is, is on you. I hope nobody else on anyone's list is fucking dead. Because I'll get... <laughs> Everyone's dead, bro. Especially to you. Mm. Next on my list, someone that's dead. Oh my god! Can he even tour anymore as himself? No, he's, he's dead. No, they can't. They uh, 
they already retired, so I'm glad that they retired before he fucking died. Oh, that's good. That helps. That actually helps. Because now I'm upset and here. depressed. This I totally do a cash grab. If you, okay. <laughs> I need, uh, this is what I want. I want. To, I want to start a band with like a 98 year old motherfucker, so that when he does die, I cash in on that. You got to see me because I'm honoring this guy tour. Right. It's like fucking money. Dot com. It's, it's printing money, ladies and gentlemen. I would do it. It's called the Mint Tour. <laughs> the I hired a 98 year old guy to croak so I could make more money on you tour. That's not going to fit on a t-shirt, bro. I reckon. Not going to fit on a t-shirt. I'm not going to say what does fit on a t-shirt. Uh, we're not, no, we talked about it earlier. We're not going down that rabbit hole, sir. I love you. So three. I, I'm sad that he's dead now. <laughs> you should I'm not be. sad that Glenn Fry is dead, by the way. But I'm sad whoever this guy is, apparently. I wasn't a Glenn Fry fan. So I know awesome. this. Oh, sorry. He's dead to you. We had that conversation literally 4.9 podcasts ago. <laughs> was it the one with the Rebecca de Mornay? I don't know which Renee one it Zellweger? was. They're all a fucking blur, man. They're fucking beautiful. Number blur. three on my list, dude. Rush. <sighs> I need a tissue. Which album, bro? Different stages live. Recorded in 1998 in Chicago uh, off the Test for Echo Tour. Three discs. Um, The third disc is actually, was recorded in London in like 1978. So the the first two discs was the Test for Echo Tour in um, 98, which was right before... Neil Pert, the, the the drummer, right before his wife and daughter died, so they stopped touring for and recording records for five years right after that. But the the way the music was recorded and the set list, they played the majority of Twenty One Twelve. They played the majority of Moving Pictures, which I thought about putting on here, but I thought I love that live albums and I love you know the way that Getty interacts with the with the fans and. The, the 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 audio recording is why and obviously Rush is one of my top five favorite bands. I've been a fan for since I was a kid. So that that how good they are musically and how tight they are and this 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 san, this songwriting of, of Neil Pert, he writes all the lyrics. I th- I just think he's was so talented. Neil Pert. That is all. I thought you were going to say 2112, but out live out makes total sense. I actually like moving but, pictures I'm, better I'm sure. than 2112. Can you, can as a, as a connoisseur, yes. can you give me some, give me some uh, song tracks off of each and of 2112 or 2112 moving and picture? moving pictures. Like, well, so we can kind of was, it was a story album yeah. and they didn't really have names. They had like grand finale and these weird yeah. titles, but 2112, everybody knows cause it was the first song was fucking Tom Sawyer yeah, Tom and Sawyer. then limelight and then YYZ, which was, a, a um, instrumental, but YYZ is the airport code for Toronto where they grew up. And then, I'm sorry, Red Barchetta. And then, um, can you say f- that one more time? Red Barchetta. What's that? YYZ. Red Barchetta is a car. Oh. Uh, it's an Italian red oh, car. Oh, you're saying the track? That's the a track, track name. Yeah, the four. Sorry, st- you went from YYZ. You went so fast. I, sorry. I'm, no, so I'm, Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta. Med- I'm, I'm medically coping right now. Good job. I apologize. Tom Sawyer, off of moving pictures. Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta. YYZ Limelight was the first side, which is f- right. phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a so it's song. like when you go see Rush, you're hoping they play all four of those yeah, songs. Yeah, just in a row, yeah. And then over time, they, they released newer instrumental songs, which are fantastic, and they stop playing YYZ sometimes. Mm. And you're like, man, that song is so good. What's on the other side of that? Do you know? Vital right? Signs, Camera Eye something else and they're very good right. i i that album well, tom sawyer obviously everybody knows that everyone and it's knows overplayed, tom sawyer, right but it's still very technically a good song and i could i still like hearing it you know it's a deep comp deeply complex it is song. the drumming it really the transitions is. is very good but it is overplayed it's a good one. you know but i still when it comes on the radio i don't change it how could you not how could you it's one of those it's like it's kind of like who that's you bro that's like your band yeah, it is because it's they the concepts are deep. Spirit of the radio is still. So what's on that one? 
or on the on the other one, the Echo. Test for Echo Test for was Echo. a later. Because um, that's the, the, are those that we're comparing right no, now? No, oh. because um, Spirit of the Radio came out in '80, and um, that was the album right after 2112. Okay. So 2112 was a concept album, and then Spirit of the Radio came out in '80, and it was very different, very short, radio friendly. Yeah, songs. like like four minute songs. Yeah, and, and radio, uh, Spirit of the Radio is about how a song on the radio can make you feel something, an emotional response. Mm. And how you feel good when you hear that song. And that song makes me feel good. It's when I fe am in a bad mood or I feel depressed or I don't feel good, I put on Spirit of the Radio. And just the first 12 seconds makes me, f I, 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 I feel better. It's, it's fucking weird. I don't, I don't understand why that is, but I mean, I, I, I can't. I'm, Music, the reason music is so subjective is because it does evoke emotion. You can't do that. You can't play it on. Can't play oh, it on the podcast. Oh God, I'm so it's okay. Uh, we know you that. Didn't, la, 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 you didn't you hear that one. That goes. Da, da, da. You didn't hear it. We didn't hear it. Stuff and other it's stuff. It's okay. Sorry, bro. But I I agree with you, and I was thought you were looking something else up. I wasn't gonna be like Kaibashi, but I'm. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I love you. I know. It's out of heart. So we can have more of these. So we can have more couch sessions <laughs> if we don't do it properly if we don't do it right we, we won't ever do these again and go they'll, they'll yell at us. Yeah. okay so rush fucking awesome let's just be honest they're they're great but to the point music subjective because it does evoke an emotion i know what album i play when i need to clean the house because i need some angry energy bullshit right what album do you play when you're cleaning well house? i'm it's all my <gasps> oh it's just, on your just, yes. Shut the fuck up. Okay, I just, I, okay good. I, when you tell me that album, please tell example. me this is the album that I play when I clean the house. Yeah, well, that Excellent. would be it, yes. But it's like, you know how it's like, I have mood music. When I feel shitty and I want to wallow in it, I can put on a specific album and just be like, yeah, this is exactly how I feel and I want to just bathe in it. Sometimes. And then sometimes you're like, snap the fuck out of it, right? Yeah. yeah. And you're like, boom. So. What are you doing? Uh, can you click on that little speaker guy right there? This one? Yeah. I love you. Cool. Yeah, I, so I have a playlist on my phone called Happy. So that boom. when I'm in a bad mood, it'll snap me out of it. And yeah. I've probably got 12 songs on there. And they all they all make me smile. Cabo Wabo by Van Halen. Oh, yeah. I've been well, to Rome. Is it Hagar or is it? I it's mean, Hagar. Was under but when Hagar, he says, right? I've been to Rome, Dallas, Texas. And I just love it. It makes me like, yeah. Yeah. I you know what you're saying. You know? Like, I can't drive 55 can get yeah, me pretty much yeah, out dude. of any mood. It's yeah. like, it's because it's one foot on the brake. Yes. And one on the gas. It's Hell like, yeah. so like, it's one of those songs. Yeah. Absolutely. And I can see Rush doing that for you, for sure. Uh, yeah. Just the, the way that they arrange the songs and the words is, is I, I just really respect the way they did things. That's awesome. Even though they're retired and Neil is no longer with us. Rest in peace, bro. And it was, I will say that was the most unique way to find out. He, he was announced on Thursday, but he had died on Tuesday, I believe it was. Correct. It was a very, that was the most unique way because I've never heard a, a celebrity hold wow. off death it's for not like two he was days. A celebrity. But it's, even TMZ knows who Rush, like Rush has been 40 years in the, they were, yeah. Look, they're they're bigger than just the United States too. They're international, oh, yeah. right? Global, it's not right. like yeah, they're not yeah. like like some American pop band that's huge here and nowhere else. They were global. So in that respect, right? and they were where they and they were Canadian. Yeah, right? Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Toronto. so so they already had an international flair of just course. getting here. I mean, even yeah. you know, Canada yeah. obviously makes sense, but but that that's an awesome pick. Good thing we're on number three and we're already forty minutes in. Holy. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. We're going to have to go a little quicker then? No, we we'll just do be, a two-parter. We're going to do a two I love two-parters. Everything's we'll a two-parter. I think we're going to do that. In the name of love. So uh, for my number three, I felt like I needed to hear some Beatles until I die. Fuck yeah. That made it really hard. Because like I think like every live album is just women screaming. <laughs> <laughs> so like, she's like, say, no. ah! No, it's girls. So oh, girls, yes. Women. Well, womenists. It's a new term from PC, my friends. By the way, Mr. Nate Levesque asked me, he 
talk. He said, what's up, Draws? I told him that we're launching this stuff July 2nd, the audio only stuff. Yeah. I put on Facebook. Slider already said hi. And it weird. Eaton jumped in. He's like, hey. So it was cool. Paul Algy, it's a couple guys. But Levesque's like, you got to do PC. I go, bro, I already quoted it, bro. You got to do PC? The PCU, the movie. Remember? Oh, I, Don't yes. wear the band. Don't be that guy. That, that's my PCU. So that was he and that's what he and I watched. Holy crap, that didn't make my top 10. But I know it's so I could probably no more movies. Okay, yes, it's happening, bro. Because it's my real quick of you this episode. You can't stop it. You can only hope to contain it. Yes, it's my real quick of this episode. That was going to be. Uh, just going to spatter out movies and go, God damn it, I don't have that one either. Because this is real. Like, we're locking it down. We're actually leaving for Deserted Island like in two hours, right? Don't we have a book? Oh, we have to check in. Shit. We, uh, yeah, we're I, mean, I need checking. a pre-board. Dude, stand by. <laughs> Did you tell what? What are you, B15? B48? Um, <laughs> so back to okay. the we're Beatles. Good, back to the Beatles. Uh, no live album doesn't work. And then my girl, she's like, what about the White Album? Because it's two albums in one. And then you're like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Because more Beatles, right, equals better. Until you hear. And then you're like, that's like only one album's worth. So if I'm going to pick a Beatles album, I had to pick one that's my favorite song, favorite Beatles song on it, and just is a pretty all-around decent fucking album. And I'm going to go with Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Because that album, I, I have to read the discography. Discography? Discography? Dis the discographies of this album state the following. <laughs> what state? Are you ready for the discography? I'm not ready at all because I need to talk more words that have a th in them. Oh boy! Because I, my my stuff is a suffering of the fuck statues. Okay, and other stuff too. That's just wrong, man. Your head is very white today, sir. I know it's shiny. Do you need to get you some makeup? I need. Some I need to powder you my need nose. Some foundations. I need to powder my foreheads. Why do you got so much light and I don't? Um, would you like to switch? Do you want to switch next time? Let's switch next time. I don't even like you. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 hey, let, let's switch seats next time. I, I don't even like you. <laughs> it's like, uh, hold on. We're playing the hundred thousand dollar pyramid. <sighs> Things that people don't ever say back to back. That'd be up the butt, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> things that people don't say back to back is where's the, <laughs> the strangest place you've I've ever done whoopee in the, it's funny that you said that one to me because i literally was saying whoopee the, before you texted me and uh, all that and you said in the butt i didn't even know it was whoopee question yeah until after that'd be up the butt bob that'd be up the butt bob <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh <fuck>. why <laughs> I like let's switch seats. I don't even like you. Well, okay. okay. <laughs> so Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. We hope you will enjoy the show. Where are you at, you sons of bitches? I know they're here. There you are. Okay, finally. Wrap it up. I'm oh okay. <laughs> Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. On it. Will a little help from my friends. Lucy and Sky with Diamonds. Getting better. Fine uh fixing a hole. She's leaving home. Being for the benefit of Mr. Kite. Within You, Without You. When I'm 64, the best song ever written. Lovely Rita, meet her maid. Do, 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 do. Good morning, good morning, Sgt. Pepper's band and Day in the Life. I read the news today, oh boy. That's about as complete of a Beatles album as you're going to get. Because outside of that, like the early help stuff, yeah, it's poppy and fine. But that wasn't their good stuff. That was their pop stuff. That defined a different genre of music. But this is where they... When I'm 64, so complete. It's just an awesome song. And who you get off with clarinet. So done.com. That's my only Beatles, by the way. Good choice, sir. I, I didn't want to, I don't want to over taint it. <laughs> you said taint. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know where the taint is. Oh God. I don't, I don't, I was asking. Oh, do you, you guys, know where it is? I'm sorry. Do you, do you guys know where the taint is? <laughs> Number four, sir. I'll GPS for it <laughs> later, bro. T Can you put a marker like you, when, you, when you lose T your uh, positioning system? When you <laughs> when you do like where's your car? You put a pin. Can you put a pin on the taint? Yes. Okay. It's called a tin, not a pin, because <laughs> it it puts a pin on your taint. Taint pin. This has gotten out of hand. Yes, sir. Number four on my list of deserted island records. <laughs> Dot com. Van Halen. 
5150. Fuck yeah. Uh I I because of my age, I am sad to admit I prefer Sammy Hagar than David Lee Roth. The the guitar. Is it the the red guitar with the splattery? That's I love that guitar. Is that yeah. One but too, no. Which one out? Um that came out in like eighty four. Right? That was probably nineteen eighty four. But I mean I I like the night I mean I like David Lee Roth, but anyway, I my sophomore year of high school, I listened to that tape in 5150 every single day on the bus going home from high school. Every single day. And most people, you know, people, all they know the hits, you know what I mean? But the, 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 the title track, 5150, I think is one of the best Van Halen riffs ever. And most people don't even know that song. So I, I could just play that record hot summer nights get out dreams is an amazing dreams is on my happy list just phenomenal was that his first album with them yes it was so i thought it was his first album absolutely. i i have a story time for that Fuck but, I, you. but i'm but i'm waiting until you tell until you complete your total van halen crush because sammy is my hailing guy too uh, and look roth is talented absolutely great nothing to man. take away but no hagar is fucking rock he's just a rocker and he enjoys every second of it he he lives wide yeah i i think sammy's a better singer i think dave's an amazing front man yeah and those albums with dave were phenomenal i mean 1984 well yeah van halen one with running with the devil is great it's just women and children first great dude diver down yeah they're i mean they're amazing and i you know i have them all and i love them all but still because of my coming of age 5150 i think is my favorite and now I put a bow on it. Go. Sir, I believe it's story time. I believe you, it's your turn. Bottom right. Bottom right. Hang are on. you going Wait for are it. Are you guys ready for story time? Wait for it. <laughs> we need wigs, bro. I'm flowing my hair. <laughs> flinging my hair back. His story time, ladies and gentlemen. I was a fortunate watcher of Van Halen's For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge Tour. Me too, sir. I also, my mom's boss's son, was the personal roadie for mom's one Eddie boss's v- son. Okay. Van Halen. Mom, boss's her son. boss, that person's son, yes. that woman's son. Her son was Eddie Van Halen's personal roadie. Yes. To the point where the pound cake with the drill part in the yes. beginning was him. It was some. They blew out an amp during recording, and he was drilling it out. And they heard the sound, and they heard it, and they're like, "We need that in the beginning." So that's one part of it. Wow! Right? That's one part. So we were going. That's after, obviously, because it came out. Pound Cake was after that tour. It was after Four Unlawful Carnival. No, it wasn't. Oh, was it during that? That was, it was the, during. That yeah, was the, it was the first the song. That's right. On it the is album, correct. Mm-hmm. So. Right, and that's what it was. It was like they caught, they were hearing it, and they, it was all being recorded. And like, that's a fucking great opening. So, like, it inspired just by some happenstance. The other part of it, it was ninety one. Yes, sir. Okay. He came out before the show and handed us all personal picks, Eddie Van Halen's picks that say F U C K on them, and blah blah blah. So I have like two or three or whatever with my with my little my little ticket from Philadelphia. So I'm I'm originally from Philadelphia. We drink water. There, there's a couple things we do. We drink water. Lager is said, but is only Yingling lager, if you say it. We go home, and we talk on the phone. <laughs> we also boo people off stages. So a, a, a little-known band called Alice in Chains opened okay. up for Van Halen. And it was ju- Man in the Box, I think, it just... It was grunge. It was 91. It just kind of, kind of come out. I don't know who opened for them for you. Yeah, I don't remember. I will tell you that they started. Do you remember what month it was? I'm, I want to say was August, but summer? I have to look it up. Okay. It okay. was a summer tour. I think Same we tour. were August. Yeah. yeah. People just started chanting Eddie. Well, yeah. Which, who wouldn't do that at yeah. a... But welcome to Philadelphia, boys and girls. We we throw snowballs at Santa Claus. We cheer when Michael Irvin snaps his neck on the field. We're well, pretty that fucking guy's kind of a dick. We're kind of douchey. Yeah, it didn't help, but we were douchey anyway. So, um, Eddie, Ed, fucking just the whole place. Is it Lee Staley, the head sing- lead singer of Alice? He's Lane, dead Lane now. Staley. I think Lane Staley. He's like, fuck you. <laughs> Throws the mic down, walks the fuck off. 
walks off. We start cheering because we're like, we just fucking got rid of whoever the fuck these guys were. And they hadn't, they had just gotten, they weren't anyone yet. And we're talking Seattle sound making it to Philadelphia. It wasn't, it, it, it had it's to grunge. Had to, <laughs> and then you have to reset your clock like three hours. One way or not, I don't even know which way to go. Daylight savings time. Is it ahead it's behind? Terrible. If you're behind, you go forward. To, or if you're behind, ahead, go back. I, I, fuck it. Spring. Anyway, that's my story, but I have. A four on one or two four on off car. If I have an extra one, I'm going to give that to you, sir. I would love that, dude. Thank you. I would love that. I want to give you. I'm I'm going to look for that. I have to find it, but I have to look for it. Um, if I have one of those with my ticket on, that's my story time. That guy, pound cake and love that story time. Yes, thank you. I um, his name's Matthew, by the way. Shout out to Matthew. Matthew Matthew Ward. I don't remember. I I don't remember who I. Who opened for that? I remember going and I was there with three or four brothers, Pat Mo, Eric, Johnson, California here, here. Phoenix. And Stefan. May oh he God, rest may, may he rest in peace. Love that guy. Oh man. He died a long time ago. Um Jeez. and then what's funny is that I saw Allison Chains the next year with Aikens and they opened for Anthrax, Megadeth, and Slayer on the Clash of the Titans tour in ninety two awesome. here at the Madhouse on McDowell. And they they were fucking Alice Chains was fucking good. Yeah. And I saw an interview with the lead guitar player from Anthrax, Scott Ian, just a year or two ago. And he was talking about that tour. It was like the 25th anniversary or some shit. Whatever, 30th, whatever. And he goes, when he heard them, he goes, oh, fuck. These guys are good. They're the new grunge is fucking for real. Yeah. We're in fucking trouble. Yeah. Because they, they, they were just as good as fucking Slayer. Yeah. Right. And he was, the proof was right there because they were fucking badass. True grunge. I mean, they were. Yeah. You know, the you've sound, got a handful. The right? Soundgarden. The Soundgarden, the Pearl, Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah. And, STP for sure. And these guys. Fucking, yeah. These guys yeah. were Alice in Chains was grunge. Yeah. But, STP but they had almost heavy sound. transcended it. But they but yeah, they were heavy. Alice in Chains yeah. and Soundgarden made the heavy transition yes. so they could compete. And those two bands appealed to the heavy audiences. They did. And That's Cornell's why I liked voice. them. Fuck Cornell. Yeah, but God they, you know, damn. not Black Hole Sun, but they No, had no, a, not but they had a bunch shit. of that, other when he croons and just yells. Yeah, like, they yeah. Hunger strike, man. It's yeah. fucking I don't mind steam bread. Enough of that shit. It's all good, bro. So number four? I've already done four. I know. That which once again reiterate. Isn't that what we just did? Yes, sir. Could you reiterate? Van Halen. Van Halen. 5150. 5150. Which is the police code for somebody that's insane, crazy. I didn't know that. I just know murder, death, kill, 187, murder, <laughs> death, kill. I watch Demolition Man a lot. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Demolition Man. That's, I'm just kidding. Real That's quick, not, Demolition Man. I didn't say real quick. I know. We I should start. To, I like it. We bring it back. Bro, I'm trying to be respectful, and I'm really bad at it. It makes so me let laugh. Me, I know, but let me try to at least uh, be a dickwad shit. to you. Because, like, I, I step on your toes, bro, and it, it's got to hurt. Like, how many times have we bandaged up your toes? Ice them up, little tootsies? Yeah, little, that little piggy went to market. That little piggy went under my heel. fucked up, bro. It's all purples and shit. Ooh, you got turf toe. It's your favorite It's your favorite flavor, purple, bro. You got nerf toe. Oh, my favorite flavor is purple. Purple, purple. Is your purple. favorite orange, or which, what's your favorite? Uh, red. <gasps> red. Is you know what's my favorite flavor. color? Red number five. Oh, that's the good one. Is that the cancerous one? Delicious. The, yeah, the, uh, all the carcinogens. I love carcinogens. All the neurotoxins, all the toxins. Johnny Carcinogen. Mm. Topo Gigio. Number five, Irish Spring, delicious. John Paul II, Dan Quayle. God help us. The Great Carnet. Name a soap, a pope, and a dope. <laughs> I just remember that one. It's the only one I remember from all the Great Carnacs. It's the only one I remember. One, it's a fucking great one. I don't even know if those are the right words, but I know it's Dan Quayle, and he's the dope. And I know that the pope is John Paul II. I just don't know, recall the soap. That was so Irish Spring up. sounds totally accurate. <laughs> Dove could have been good. Or Dial or Zest. Or, have Zest. you ever felt Zest really clean? I don't think Zest was out yet. Zest was like a 90s brand or 80, late 80s. Anyway, so number four. Um, I am singer-songwriter. I am not personally a singer-songwriter. I like to sing along with singer-songwriters who play like acoustic and beautiful music and pretty songs and um, are pussies, basically. Not in a bad way. They're pussies in a in a lot hard feminine energy, really just cool way. Ed Sheeran. 
really hard to pick the album. Really hard. How many albums do you have? He has four. Okay. And the first one is so good on its own and very simple. The last one is super produced and like very pot. Like we talk about the bare naked ladies, right? Boom. Yeah, because he gave a gozillionaire. Yeah. You got these two. This one and that one where I chose the second one. Uh, I'm sorry. I chose the third one because it was, it's kind of like that prime. It's what made him big. I think other than the other two were still big or whatever, but anyway, it's the multiply one, the X Ed Sheeran X. And, uh, the reason I chose that one per se is because it has like pretty songs like Tenerife C thinking out loud, just pretty songs. So I like to sing along with that stuff. It's a pussy pick, but I'm good with that. Cause no, I'm, a pussy. I'm not going to say, I wouldn't say that. No, I know. It's just, he's not, you know, he's not been around long enough to really think that he's great, but he's been good from the beginning. So cool. That's an easy one. Uh, uh, that's that's good. I like that. Let's go to number five. Let's get that one out of the way. Okay. Thanks, bro. Number five. And these are not in any particular order, by the way, for me. They may be ranked for you, but they're well, ranked for me. Well, number one was number one. Okay. That one makes sense. Uh, number two is number two. Wow. You're and good. number nine is actually my third. So okay. I, that one's way the okay. fuck out of order. That's okay. So yeah, they're not, they're not in order. Okay. You're correct. Good. Thank you. Number five, sir. Number five, new order. Holy fuck. Substance. Blue, no. Which has Blue, Blue Monday, Monday. Love Triangle. Love Triangle. <gasps> and several other great songs. Those two, though. Those are two are the so big ones. So listenable. Yeah, because uh, Blue Monday is like seven and a half minutes. And uh, as I mentioned on the 80s podcast, our first podcast. Yes. Is that I, I love the 80s new wave um, UK sound and that yeah. song was a, a, a it's probably you know it's not Along as big with as Erasure yeah it's not as big as like Duran Duran or Adam Ant or Billy Idol but it's in not my as opinion big, but well I mean he's not a bit New Order is not a, De a Depeche Mode or The Cure right but I think their sound is recognizable and I could the point is I could listen to that album you know what I mean for, yeah, for sure. That fucking song, Blue Monday, when it when I hear those first three, four beats, bum, 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 puts bum, me in a good bum, mood. Bum, bum, bum. That part. I start dancing around like a dork, even though I'm wearing an Iron Maiden shirt. The dogs start thinking I'm a weirdo, like usual. And, uh, si, senor. Un moment. I'll get it for you. Muy okay. Okay, so let's keep going. Keep going, you're good. I just, you know, I... I, I I tried to think when I compiled the list, like, yeah, I'm a metalhead, but I'm, I don't, I like all music for the most part. There's one genre I don't care for at all, though so that's not on the list. And there's some genres I don't, I don't generally care for. Well, like, there's, I don't like certain genres as well. Well, there's some that are like, okay, I, I don't mind it, but I'm not, I don't own any of the albums. And if it's on the radio, I don't cringe or anything, but it's not my favorite. So, but the, I'm not going to, the point is to this is, uh, I'm not going to listen to metal all the time. That's why there's some rush. That's why there's some new order. That's mm -hmm. why there's some other stuff. Like if you're sitting around the campfire at on the fucking island, hey, let's put something else on besides fucking Iron Maiden. I would drink to that. Salud. Salud. Your Put choice. Pat a striker. Uh, I, I need do to, Oh, my, God, that one. Uh, uh, I'm going to bring some limes next time for you. Little please, guy. please, please. I do. usually do a little Modelo. After a little chaser. Oh, that's good. That's I my favorite. Fucking, you know, the arrogant butcher has like a Pabst and a shot for like two fifty on like happy hour downtown. Yeah. So fucking worth it. Beer and a fucking tequila shot. It's fucking hot. I think it's like, like, I don't even know if it's, I think it's actually decent for fucking cheap. It's like amazing. So it's not gutter tequila. I don't think so. Okay. The gutter. No, it's, not, it's from my crack of the, <laughs> of the butt. The tint. I, did you, I guess you found it. Uh, I, I did not find They find four of the me. The pin. Oh, I felt, yeah. I felt these. I there, did not you find felt it. the pin in your tent. <laughs> Ooh. Um, all right. So if I may touch on New Order, because sure. New Order is a great fucking choice. The reason we even did this one, I know you're a metalhead, bro. I bro. love you. But I know you're so eclectic about music as a whole. Yeah, you, there's a genre. Okay, big deal. But I know you're big in the 80s and whatever. New Order is a great, and they are different sounding yeah, than the Pesh sure. Mode. They're different than the Cure. The Cure had like, this was like almost all synth. It was almost it, seen. It is. Is it all? Okay, so I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. There are some albums, like, not that it matters, but Jesse McCartney has an album out that's all, 
he's a he was second place in the new mass singer but it doesn't matter he what? had an album that would that did not have I mean, a what? single mass singer the tv show i never even heard of it bro the new what bro really no, for, no. okay we're gonna go back on that let's I, talk about that later let's just yes. not even let's not no, anyway so jesse mccartney anyway had an album that was all digital not a single <coughs> not a single like guitar or anything okay that's just really odd to me but that was in the like less than five years ago okay and here blue monday was all synth it was zero like correct like string instrument was there was no guitar no four bass. dudes with drum machines and everything keyboard, right? with synthesizers. synthesizers that was it that's, what that's it was. all it was oh, so fucking great and it was ingenious it was groundbreaking as i said on the first podcast and on top of that blue monday the cover of that by by orgy yeah for example, as you mentioned is a f oh i already said that shit you well it's been three months it's department fine. of redundancy department how may i help you i'm i'm sorry we don't it's have okay. these phones anymore i'm sorry department of redundancy department how may i help you <laughs> anyway you can just use your uh, like phone. well i want to go back because i'm going to get my razor i'm going to get a new motorola razor and be like, your flippies yeah and it'll be like this you why know, do they call like them a flip phone yeah because you flip it why don't open? they call them flippies oh that's a great question did the flop already take did well, like shoe? flip flops should be called flippies, not flip flops. They I mean, just call them flippies. They should actually be called flop flips. Here, <sighs> hello, Twitter We're world. So fucked. Do me a favor, put on your flop flips and take your first step, and then go back and forth, and then listen. You will distinctly hear a flop before the flip. Your first step's a flop. I just want to let you know that. Oh, uh, bro, don't give me Jim Brewer eyes. Don't give me Meg. Don't give me Jill and Hall eyes. Maggie Gyllenhaal eyes like that bastard. All right, okay, number five. I, I'm there. Okay, Whoa. boom. I I like rap. Every once in a while, I like rap. I like rap. Dr. Dre's Chronic is a great album. It's not enough. N.W.A. is a great album. Greatest hits, maybe. Whatever. So where did I go? I went with someone who just kind of encompassed all. I felt like this was the most bridging rap group. Maybe the second, the next one is, but Run DMC. Oh man, I thought you were gonna go raising hell, bro. Oh, damn Did you it. think I was gonna go with the other ones? I thought you were gonna go with Beastie Boys. The Jews? Yeah. <laughs> not the Juice, OJ. No, but hello, he's... Twitter world. I am not. I, I am the Juice. Hello, not well, the I juice. have a new rap album. I... Twitter world. <laughs> so we're get we'll get to the Juice. One of my favorite. <laughs> I'm... And while we're on that subject, one of my favorite jokes is from Sarah Silverman. And it goes a little something like this. Is it an OJ joke? No. It's um, Why my, not? my sister married an Abramowitz, and she wanted to hyphenate her name to Silverman Abramowitz. They just shortened it to Jews. It's one of my favorite jokes of all time. <laughs> it's like a fucking great. I love Sarah Silverman, too. She's so oddly hot. Oh my God, she's and smart. She's smart. That's what gets me yeah. with her. She Most she comedians tear are, dude. holes into my into my any psyche I could ever have. Yeah, she would she, tear yeah, me I apart. Agree. I couldn't keep up. Anyway, so there it was. Run DMC, Raising Hell, You Be Illin. Basically that album was awesome. Is that Whose House Runs House? No, that's after. Because Who's house? but but I, yeah, Runs it's house. just so good. So like let me do it real quick because I will run it down. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yes! Fuck. Yes. Yes. I, well, I didn't say it. I didn't mean it that way. Okay. Yeah. I did it. And I remember Raising Hell was in different colors. I had the purple and green one, but you could get the red, like a weird red with blue. <coughs> it was real, like magenta and cyan, right? Now, Peter, Pop, Pick, Peppa, but Ron Rock Rom, it's tricky. My Adidas, Walk This Way, Is It Live, Perfection, Hit It Run, Raising Hell, UB Illin, Dumb Girl, one of my favorite, Dumb Dum 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 dum. Son of a Byford and proud to be black. Apparently, I'm. It's in line with this week's stuff that's going on. So, June twenty twenty rocks, bro. Raising hell. All right, number six for you, sir. Motley Crue, shout at the devil. Fuck yeah! Sorry, kickstart my heart. No, sir, that's Dr. Feelgood. Many albums oh. later. This was 1982. <sighs> this was the Sunset Strip. You're too old, bro. Leather and lace. <laughs> with give me, Nikki give me Six a couple, with Edward. 
Yeah. Give me a couple. Give me a dude, couple. Dude, she's got the songs. looks that kill. Yeah. And sh- obviously, shout out the devil, dude. Come on. Yeah. yeah there's a bunch of good songs on that shit. Too fast. No, too fast for love was before that. But I, I mean, I had to pick a hair metal. I felt like I had to pick a hair metal band. Um, and it couldn't be Poison. Well, I do love the first Poison band, even though they look like chicks. Cry Tough. I love that song. Okay. So um, I thought about going with Rat. Bon, no Bon Jovi, but I even the Rat out of the Cellar album with Stupid, oh, yeah, with songs. the Geico commercial. Yeah. Right um, but oh, yeah, that songs. whole album is very good. It is good, actually. And most people don't know. Anyway, let's not talk about Rat. But, um, well, I could fold in quiet riots first like metal metal health was a for great real, album real dude for it was a really good album you knew bang your head and you knew the come on feel the noise absolutely but, but as a whole those two it, albums it, were yes. rat and rat and queens uh, quiet riot were very yes very good yes I, I yeah i totally agree so i i had to do i felt like i had to do one hair fucking band because that's my goddamn license plate so whoa um so i did crew and i did shout the devil but i didn't think theater pain was a good album I think Girls, Girls, Girls is a good album. Yeah. Dr. Feelgood's a good album, but again, oh, it's overplayed. It's poppy. That one became, that was it their did. pop. That's Even though I did like Samuel's Situation, Dr. Feelgood's got a great grungy, th- throaty fucking attitude to it, and I love that. Even though it's overplayed, I still love that song. But Shout Out the Devil's got aggressiveness to it. Even though it's a hair band, they are still aggressive, and I love that. That's fucking heavy, bro. It's love. That's energy. That's yeah. That's a song that gets you in a mood. That you want to get feel good. You just did, but that's right. Fine. I know. That's what I'm saying. Didn't, oh, were you yeah. doing doc? Didn't no, you talk I'm about? doing shout the devil. You talked about the opening. I love. You said that. I came back to that point. You said you yes, like, correct, Doctor yeah, yeah, Feelgood, because yeah. of the heaviness. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, and I was just doing that. It had yeah, that like that, muddiness that, to it. That correct. <laughs> even though they were a hair band yeah. and that they were incredibly popular during that album cycle. That song had attitude. It did. It definitely was. And it was great. And I think it was just because they had hit popularity that that became their mainstream song. So it kind of was a curse. Because what they put on the radio, in my opinion, is not generally what's always the best music. For real, want, dude. The radio's want, shit. Right. They, I'm trying to be cool with it, but... Yeah, it's tough. Fuck that. I'm not. Well, I've not been in the inside. I don't know how the decisions are made, but when I see this song get played and that one not... I don't know it. I've never seen it, bro. You just know that Dude, it doesn't exist. Dude, when you exist. listen to an album, right. like, I, know. I mean, and I remember I vividly know. being a ro- in a room in when the fucking... This is a not conscious episode, bro. I remember being in the room with an old girlfriend, may she rest in peace, and a girlfriend of hers in when... Did she die of old age? How old was she? I don't she? know how she died. She died at 41. Oh, okay. I was saying old girlfriend. Never mind. Yeah, she was 97. She died after the, her ex-husband, the 98-year-old that you're going to tour with, died. Just last year. Oh, shit. You know, because I like him old like that, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> I was trying to make a joke, trying to make a little light. This is anyway, Beer Googles, right? Beer Googles. Okay. So it, that, it was the album after Bon Jovi's whatever. So some fucking Bon Jovi album came out, and I list, I bought the fucking tape like a dork. I buy tapes all Columbia House, bro. <laughs> I fucking love that shit. <laughs> oh, man, I, you- I probably still owe them like $12. I have a Milli Vanilli tape. Oh, you fucking Because dork. getting a dollar back was not worth it. Because they were, they paid, they bought back the tapes. Remember that? It, it, anyway, you're sorry. absolutely right. So I listened to the tape, and then and then I listened to it with her and her little friend, who she accused me of sleeping with, who I never did, the dumb whore. But anyway, tangent. So she said, "Oh yeah, I like this song." Did you want it? Of course, she had big titties. Why did you after she accused? Because she slept with my clothes. fucking roommate. So I'm like, that's gross. I'm not gonna bang her. Oh. Um, you that's, like sloppy apes. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not. I know I'm not, you're not I'm, that I, guy, I, I wouldn't. Bro. I know you're not. And that bro. bitch pestered me. I know you did. I know you did. I know. You're right. You know what? I was so tired. I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Yeah, let me throw I, it in you. I fucking fucked the shit out of her. You're absolutely right, you dumb whore. <laughs> now shut the fuck up. Welcome to Beer Google's ladies and gentlemen. We had technical difficulties. We are now talking. Uh, we are on couch with Chris. We are on different podcast. <laughs> couch with Chris time. So check Mark's going to edit this part out. I'm so sorry. Not anyway, at all. this is a fucking. I'm, this is gold, bro. Fuck this shit. Bro, so I, I bought the that. fucking Bon Jovi tape, and we we're listening to Columbia to House. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a shot, you fucking okay, asshole. Okay, bro. I think we might almost be out. That's why there's a Patron bottle there, fucker. So I bought the tape, and we're, these me and these two whores are listening to it. One was a whore. They're both the other fucking one accused whores. you of being a whore. 
Look, this is not going to go down so smoothly. And they liked, oh, I like this song, and I like that song. And I'm like, okay, you dumb whores. But the point is, what? Were they Bon Jovi? The Bon Jovi Jovi fucking songs. And I go, yeah, okay. But track six, they they released whatever, the second song, and it was already a big hit. I don't even remember. I can look it up if you really want to know. Uh, No. It was like Better Better Roses was, I could already, I go, track six, Better Roses. That's What's going to be the next I go, that's the next single. That's going to be the next big hit. And they go, no, I don't think so. I have sand in my vagina. And what do you think? Right. Fucking boom. Seven weeks later, it comes out. And I go, remember what I said? They go, no. I'm like, fuck you and your whore friend. Get the fuck out. That was the worst story time ever. And we I didn't, didn't even have a, st- I didn't we didn't even hit the fucking this. button. Fuck. Sir, salute. Um, what I love, <laughs> what I loved about this story, besides you just going and into using rage the whore word and your eyes turning black. <laughs> I channeled my inner Horus. <laughs> hey, let's click. <sighs> that bitch. Um. <laughs> oh, by the way, the moral of the story has nothing to do with picking uh, the the next song. It's that Woody's old ex girlfriend's friend is a bitch, or accused him of sleeping with some. No, my my old girlfriend accused me of sleeping. With her best friend. Yeah, now she's dead. There's a karma. Boom, done. Sorry, bro. Um, was that too soon? No, not at all. It's I been, apologize. Like, no, I, it don't. You don't need to. I, I, I'm going. To, How we self police. This music thing went down the shitter. Fast. No, this. No, we're going to right back on track because you're correct. You can predict the next song. Absolutely. It's what's fu- really interesting any, any is can go. Oh, blueprint, blueprint. Right. It's a fucking. Right. Oh yeah, it is. Dude. Well, Foo Fighters. Uh, Dave Grohl specifically says yes. chorus, Let's verse, talk about that verse, asshole. chorus, verse, chorus, verse. He know he has a formula blueprint for it. He knows okay. it. No Grammys. No. Why can't we talk about Dave Grohl? He's we, an be, artist. He's good. What's my old dog's name? Dave? Mr. Fool. Mr. Foo. I'm drunk. It's Foo, bro, not Grohl. It's Foo. Let's move on. Uh, well, whatever, bro. I'm going to drink more. I'm going to get violent. I'm going to get angry. And then you're going to ask me why. And I go, I don't know. I just am. You're getting blurry, dude. Am I? Yeah, that's my fault. Oh, bro. We'll just pick the one in the middle to talk to. I need, I need, <laughs> I need, I need Which one are we? All right. I can need uh, an eye patch. Dude. So number six for you. Motley Crew. Shout at the, yes. Wind, something. Shout at the devil. It's I don't know Motley what, Jew. Shout at the rabbi. No. Oh shit! That, yep. that one got too far. You never heard that before? No. Um, why would I do anything anti-Semitic like that? Okay. I heard that joke in. As a matter of fact, my number, si- my number. That was your number six, correct? Yes, sir. My number six is Jews, motherfucker. Beastie, motherfucking no boys, bro. No way, dude. License to motherfucking ill. How could you not put that in? How it is honestly, if I had one album that I had to pick, I think honestly, it's weird, but it's just fucking every song that you'd ever want. Is. Brass Monkey, album. dude. Brass Monkey, Girls, Fight for Your Right, uh, No Sleep Till Brooklyn is like that's the one. Dun, 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 dun. No Sleep Till oh, yeah. Brooklyn. Forgot about like, that gets one. me fucking just. Going, bro. Is that your house cleaning song? It's probably up there. No, it's not. But okay. it's, it's coming up. Okay, it's, good. I'm it's excited. actually number 10. So I'm excited to hear about is, your house. Um, I went back to back kind of interesting guys. They came from punk, guys. I don't know if everyone knows that, but they were not rap anything until they just, they kind of talked with their songs and then it became what it became. Geniuses. Sorry, sorry that one of them's gone already, mm. but they're really smart guys. They're really entertaining. And they made that album, eighty seven. it was 87. Mm-hmm. I fucking, you might think of John Bon Jovi before you think of Beastie Boys, but not during that time. Beastie Boys came out and just shat all over, like, the radio. I mean, it was, Fight for Your Right was just such that well, children. Well, MTV. What are you going to do with your life, right? MTV like, yeah. fucking pushed them onto the radio. It, it was Twisted Sister, we, I Want to Rock, kind of is Fight for Your Right. It was like oh, the yeah. next generation's Fight for Your Right. And yeah. that was about, what, eight, five, six years apart. So it was almost like three. a- Three. It was only three 84 years. 84 to 87. Oh, fuck. It was 84. Was that mm-hmm. late? What do you want to do with you? Anyway. Awesome album. Cool. Is that we're not going to take seven. it? Yes. Was then to 80. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, same thing. Same thing. Yeah. So that's where it was. It was just the new, it, it was just smart. 
girls brass. Like yeah, you it said, was great, brass great brass writing, brass. great music. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It changed the world of music because they started sampling in Paul's boutique, and they were. I my understanding is that some royalties weren't paid out, so I don't want to speak to that too much. But just the idea of taking a portion of a song as a back as a atmosphere or backdrop for something. And it's almost like Maya, what we talk most advanced yet, yet acceptable. It's something that you're familiar with. Like hearing kid rock do that one song that sounds like sweet home Alabama. Yeah. You know, it's like, which it's is just, great. Yeah. It, it rocks. It's, it's on its own. Phenomenal. It is. And I, I'm not even yeah. a big fan, but and Ed Sheeran takes thinking song. out loud is a Marvin Gaye song. I mean, basically in its back. So it, it creates that vibe because music's already been created and it sucks because it's almost plagiaristic, but it's not, you know what I mean? So it's like a re, like a re, in an interesting way doing that. That's when Dr. Dre started. Everybody started doing after that point. They didn't do it really before. Yeah, before early nineties, right? Before that time. So there you go. Number six. Number, number seven for number you, sir. sir. Number seven, sir, is some classical music. Ooh. My favorite composer, Vivaldi, who is well known for the Four Seasons. I uh, picked his album La Stravaganza because I do I do like I love all classical music whether it's violins or piano or oboe or whatever but I do like Vivaldi the best so that's when I'm cooking with the dogs or, or running with the devil running with the dead or shouting at the devil or shouting at the devil um, or just reading in the house or s whatever. I do like um, from time to time, which is pretty frequently three three times a week. I would say I'm, I do put classical music on, so I had to put at least one classical musical reference. And it's funny because I was listening to something today. Every Sunday, the local classical PBS station has Sunday Baroque, and it was funny because the what I have no idea the composer or or the orchestra who was playing the composer this morning, but. The, the the beat of the music and the complexity of the notes being played reminded me of heavy metal. And I thought that's really weird that most people find no similarities between classical music and metal. And I think there is many. And I'm done. Go. That's very interesting. Well, to that point, that just speaks to your complexity in general for music appreciation. Yes, sir. Um, I am happy to admit I appreciate simple, like an acoustic guitar or a piano and a voice. That's that's my music because it's something I like because I can sing to it or help create or be part of. Classical music's amazing. Absolutely. It's hard to listen to some for long periods of time for me because it's, very complex. I mean, how many hundred, how many pieces? Right, yeah, go into hundreds. It and you talk about the metal, and it's it's interesting. I'm wondering how many tracks that they're laying, or if it's one track. Yeah, I've always wondered hard. that too. I don't know because it is like that. It, there's a there's a layering of it that just adds on top of itself, and fuck, like four of each type of string. I mean, yeah. like, are you fucking kidding? And then right. getting them all on the same page. And then one of the fucking composers that was most famous was deaf, for God's sakes. And yeah. Fuck, like, holy shit. But Vivaldi's a really good choice of the of everyone available because I think he, uh, I think Vivaldi was acceptable almost. Like, I don't, I don't know how to explain. Like, he, he never offended anyone. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't really know. Yeah, but his know. music is... Uh, it, it, it it invokes emotional response in me, and that's why Beautiful. I many do. I mean, Tchaikovsky as well, and he's a close second. Only if you're chopping. <laughs> that's I'm Chopin. Uh, Chopin broccoli. To your point about the multiple. I know, I was just kidding. It's yeah, fantastic. Chopin. The um, to your point about the multiple instruments. Um, of course, to bring it full circle, I. <laughs> Two tours ago, um, there's a song. Thank you for your service. Uh, I saw Maiden four times on this tour in 20... Fuck, 2015. Blast. Fuck, who cares? And they have three guitar players, and they have for a long time. But um, I've heard this song that they... This one particular song they play live, The Red and the Black... And I have no idea what it's about, but I like the song. 
it's like 13 minutes. Thank you. And thank you. Sir. There's three different guitarists, right? The point of this bullshit is that when I saw them play that live for the first time, I could actually hear the three distinct guitar parts at the same time live. And I couldn't on the record. And I was like, wow, holy shit. I don't know why in the auditorium I could hear that and why on my speakers I couldn't. I don't know. But I, I was so impressed. I was wondering if one frequency took the other. Maybe it's because I only have two speakers or in my car. Could be. But in the audit. A little bit of everything. But, and I was like, and then I saw them four times on that tour and they played it. And I was like, and I was looking forward to the next night because I wanted to hear it again. I wanted to see, could I pick it up? You know, could I, could I, could I identify it again? It was fucking cool as shit. Yeah. And I'm like, this is a fucking metal band for Christ's sake. And they play Number of the Beast for Christ's sake. And I'm looking forward to the part where I can hear the three different distinct guitars. Yeah. That's, that's what you weird. should be. That's because because you like music, bro. Well, that's how it yeah, works. and I like to. And I like, you like to dissect. You like to uh, yeah, it exactly. Out. I like to pick out the weirdness. Don't get me wrong. It's like watching a movie or watching a you know Seinfeld episode over and over again and catching that new joke that you yeah, missed the course. first forty two times. It's like that, but musically, totally get it. Yeah. Well, one more. We cleaned it out. This is the last one. Yeah, yes. Uh, until the next one. <sighs> All right, sir. We're getting through this. So, Vivaldi, could yes, you sir. give me that uh, the album again, please? La Stravaganza. And if I were, to, if I were forced of Vivaldi upon me, I would go for the Four Seasons. Just so you know, no, no, I know it's, it's, it's no, no. I'm, I'm, I admit my basicness. It's okay. Yeah, I, I'm okay with it. And I'm just saying, like, I am not Mister Classical, like understanding. I just don't. It's very complex and yeah. it's great to listen to for me, but I can't. I have a hard time long terms really getting into it. I can get into a song, but it's like hard to do that. Anyway, so number seven for me. Um, once again, we talked about greatest hits and we can't have greatest hits. So I like Bob Marley. If I'm on an island, I should play some fucking island music. <laughs> Like, right? hello. So reggae made sense. Um, Bob Marley's legend would have been my pick, but it's a c- compilation of all the greatest hits. So I ended up going with Exodus. Exodus. And then it reminded me of a story when we were in college. Uh, every Friday, we were in the bottom side. <gasps> story time. Yes. yes. <sighs> <laughs> so every time. Every time, every Friday, we would get a cigar. We'd sit and watch the sunset behind our campus while playing Exodus. Stupid story, but okay. Anyway, has a lot of good songs in it. So, you know, Bob Marley, Exodus, boom, done. Um, and it's island. We're on an island. You know, so, yay. That's a little short story time there, man. I know, bro. I, I just I still I, liked it. I wanted to share well, I wanted to know let you know that we smoke cigars and watch the sunset while listening to Exodus every time we put the speakers out the window. And like everyone would all like everybody would walk by and we'd just be chilling and be like, What's up? I don't think we had how you doing yet. It was ninety two with friends in ninety two. Yeah. Damn it. So I probably was like, How you doing? Oh wait, there was like one woman on campus. Never mind. We said it to all the dudes. <sighs> fucking motherfucking twelve hundred. God damn people on this campus and only 150 women. Dude, therapy, we need, to, we need to up our... We need to go twice a week, dude. I think we need to drink twice a week, twice a month. <laughs> we need to... Have, okay, sure. We're good. Okay, so Bob Marley Exodus. Boom. Good pick, dude. Thanks, man. Peace and love. Peace he, and love. He was peace and love. He just was chill. You know, he, only, he got shot. I didn't know he got shot. In the mm-hmm. 70s, he got shot. A, a bullet grazed his arm and shot him in the... And it hit, entered his arm. It was weird. I didn't know that. I'm like, who, why would you want to fucking shoot Bob fucking Marley? People, people are crazy, dude. Why would you want to shoot, Do- shoot Dr. Doc- Doc- Dr. Martin Luther King, dude? Yeah, that's true. Because you're, ja- you're a dick. Don't be a dick. Yeah, and you shoot John Lennon because you fucking want to impress Jodie fucking Foster? Bro. Or whatever the f- Whatever that one was. Fuck. Yeah, so eight. Uh, nine, uh, eight? Sixty-two. Eight, sir. Your turn for number eight. <sighs> I removed two albums off the list 
and I put them in the honorable mention to put this one on. You bumped two? Yes, sir. May I ask your process? Did you have two in there and then this one popped into your head and then you did it? Or how did you how did you get about that? I want to hear this process because that's awesome. I don't want to hear that ever again. <laughs> don't fucking do that, bro. Well, let me tell you something. Hey. So I <laughs> the process was I removed the two greatest metal albums of all time in in every metalhead's opinion, which I will get to. Because I've heard them so many times, I can play them in my head whenever I want. So why would I take them on the album deserted list with me? Fuck it. So I put on a different album that I like better. That's not the right way to say it, but I got right. nothing. So Well, fuck we it. talked about something that's listenable that you that you can just, you know. Yes. And there's different moods we need to be in. So music, you're going to have different genres. Yes. It. So front to back. This album I love, and it has one of my favorite songs on it. And the majority of the album, despite its heaviness, is about being uplifted and peace and unity and being kind to your fellow human being and being good to each other. So even if I'm alone on this deserted island, it has a good message. Hope. Well, I'll be on There's the alley with you, good. so don't be mean to check. We're on deserted islands oh fuck. i think we have to be adjacent and I, deserted kind of means not i will on send the you island. peaceful smoke signals my dude i will send you in russian i'll send smoke signals oh, I'm so... like, what the fuck does that poof, mean poof double he's, poof he's then forward to say, looking for nuclear vessels i have what nuclear vessel <laughs> he's forward to looking for computer okay forward to looking so the album is kill switch engage my ninth favorite band alive Don't or really. just breathing it's not a live album, though. No, it's not. Okay. The album is called Alive oh. or Just Breathing, which is the fact that it's called that is like, think about it. Am I alive or am I just breathing? Which the song, that's what it's saying is like, am I taking full advantage of my life? Am I doing, can I, am I being the best possible person I can be? Am I taking advantage of the amazing things this world has to offer? Am I being a good friend to check mark? Am I being a good person? No one is good friend to check Mark. He, he check has Mark's no a fucking rock star, dude. Oh yes, check Mark is pretty cool. But don't uh, be no mean to check Mark. So. He doesn't deserve mean people in his life. Okay, be I, a good guy to check Mark. I try to be good now. <laughs> are you gonna be a good person? Are, are you alive, or are you just breathing? Are you just here? Yeah. Are you not in the moment? Be in the moment. Love what life. Have, what good of what good is life if you're not living it? I yes, mean, that's basically. And what it's that's so saying. Yeah. easy to forget that. Yeah. And those so those songs remind me of that, and I love that. Yeah. How often do we get reminded in between our mundane lives and exactly. our distracted, picking up the fucking kids from soccer practice and making whatever burritos for tomorrow's fucking potluck and shit like. Come on, man. Are you alive or are you just breathing? Just ah, that, just the title it alone. Is. It's, it's beautiful. It's fucking reminds me of, dude, life is short, man. You got to fucking grab it. Right. Yeah. Breathing, breathing just continues your life, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean life. you're taking advantage right, of everything live the life that's around you. you. Right. Totally. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Cut yeah, 100%. Shitty relationships. Boom. Gone. Good you're relationships. Take advantage of them. Flourish them. Nurture yeah. them. You know, take care of yourself emotionally, physically. Do things that you want to do. Don't do things you don't want to do. You know? Fuck. Go. Um, I'm, I'm not going to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so once again, can you say one? Kill Switch Engage? Kill Switch Engage is the band from Boston, Massachusetts. Bam. Alive or just breathing. Number eight. Number eight. Numero ocho. Okay. Uh, ESPN the ocho. I uh, almost made this a live album just because he's so good live. And Neil Diamond? <laughs> where it began. Uh, no. Sweet. Um, Peter Gabriel, sir. Nice. Peter Gabriel has Secret Garden Tour and he has this blood uh, blood tour. Like, he he's one of those that just, it is a show. It is designed to be a full 
experience all around. But, you know, I already used my two lives, so I was fucked. <laughs> so I went with his most popular album, So. It has In Your Eyes in it. You can't go wrong there. But it's got Red Rain, Don't Give Up. Love Don't Rain. Give Up is like such a sad, powerful song. Don't, you know, moved into a smaller town, got hard to settle down. It's just like, mm, so good. His whole, that whole album, Sledgehammer and just big time. It's all of it was just, bam, talk to me. You know, please talk to me. Anyway. Love it. Um, Gabriel is once again underrated, in my opinion, as one of those artists that just, you you knew of him from in your eyes, but you don't know really know you know Sledgehammer and Correct. MTV helped him because he was artistic like yes. that. But after that genre disappeared, he disappeared with it. But musically, yeah, he, it it spoke to his music. He had Paula Cole. Is she okay? I know who I, she is. What what was she? She was the female singer on okay. his out on okay. his tour. Okay, and then he had Sinead fucking O'Connor the year. Wow, that she did nothing. The year before of okay. nothing compares to you. I think it came out October, or whatever. Before she went on SNL and all that, it was that year. That was her his tour with her. He had he, that, what better talent? Like he obviously found talent somehow. I don't know. just knew how to do it, and he was unique. He was different because Genesis before Phil Collins. I never really listened to it. That was Gabriel. Agreed. Me neither. And it was Collins that mi that mainstreamed. Yes, I agree. Invisible Touch was very mainstream, but really good, but poppy. And then, but Gabriel, just when he started doing his own, he found his groove. He yeah. Just found absolutely, it. yeah. So that one had to be on there for me. I could listen to that just on loop. So thank you. Thanks, sir. I dig it. I dig it, man. That's a good choice. Yeah, I, and I could have, I should have given him some thought, and I didn't. I, he was on the top 500 list, and I I should have considered that. But you have yours, man. And you still have more that, you know, we didn't, we, yeah. we, we, we miss a lot because we well, love of course. music. So. And, you know, I only, I thought about it. Sacrifices need to be made, bro. <sighs> you thought that, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> True. You thought that what? Well, I thought about it off and on for a week, and then, you know, you're down to the fucking wire, and I'm like, fuck. You gotta, you need, you need a top 10 list, and then I'm chopping and pasting and and trying to get my shit together. Yep. <laughs> so. All right, man. So we got eight in. Uh, two more to go. Number nine. So this is your number three. Number nine said, is right? my number three. Yes, sir. Which is, um, in my opinion, that is tied with Operation Mind Crime for the best, my, my favorite album ever. Because I think from front to back, it's the best. Next, uh, it's tied with Operation Mind Crime for the best album. Um, which I think it's the best metal album of all time. Uh, Pantera, vulgar display of power. Walk, Mouth for War, obviously most, well, most people don't really even know who Pantera is, but um, in my opinion, they saved metal in the 90s. So they, you know, Grunge took over and killed hair metal. Um, Slayer put out albums, but they, in, they were not the Slayer of the 80s, and then Slayer had a rebirth in like 01, but Pantera put out album after album in the in the nineties that were just they got heavier and more aggressive and they were fucking phenomenal and they toured and they were they were a machine. But Vulgar start they, Cowboys from Hell came out before that. But Vulgar Display of Power it was, was their peak. It was fucking sick, dude. Yeah. And that's my when I go to the gym and I do leg day. That's the that's the album because that's the album for slap another plate on the leg press let's <laughs> fucking go right and that the, 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 the riffs and the drumming and phil's voice and the the aggressiveness of it it's it's not fast but fuck is it heavy and fuck does it make yeah. you want to lift some fucking weights does. And it's like I said, it's front to back and the words and there's a song called hollow about a friend of his passing away. And when he says he's mad at God and I'm like, yes, how can you not be mad at God when your best friend is taken from you? You know? Yeah. And there's a, there's a bunch of other songs in there, but every song is phenomenal. Every fucking song. It's a good album. I have that one too. And I most, don't have it on my list, but it, I have it. I own it. Most metalheads will put that in a top three of best metal albums of all time. 
I would, I would, I would argue absolutely. Yeah. Number nine. Fucking beautiful, bro. Ooh. That one. Double, double thumbs. Two bro. thumbs. Dun, 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 dun. We talked about mosh pitting. Yes, mosh pitting. To Pantera. The next one, uh, I. I was trying to go with like who I'd like to hear or who I could hear who has like some versatility about stuff. Billy Joel came to mind. I'm like, Billy Joel would be a great live one, but you know, greatest hits again. But I used them. I blew my loads, but ladies and gentlemen. First two with Bare Naked Ladies and uh, the other one and Eagles. So I went with the next album that I thought had the most songs that I liked or just could listen to. And I went with The Stranger. The Stranger. The Stranger from 77. It had Moving Out. Which is big. Obviously became a musical as well. Uh, the Stranger, Just the Way You Are. Scenes from an Italian Restaurant, my favorite Billy Joel song of all times. Vienna, that odd ding, ding, ding. It's like very goofy, tinkly on the... It's like odd, but it's so attractive. She's always a woman. Only the good die young. Um, that sounds like a greatest hits album. Yeah, get, get it right the first time. Everybody has a dream and The Stranger reprise. But so... Uh, only the good die young was not allowed to be played on the radio. I don't know if you knew this. I did not because it, but it would talked poorly of Catholic schoolgirls. Another feather in your cap. Holy of, shit! It was banned from the radio because he said, "Come out, Virginia, don't let the Catholic girls start much too late." It was too promiscuous, and I guarantee the church kiboshed that. But you that's absolutely pricks. true. That fucking song is unbelievable. That it wasn't on the radio and still as well known as it is was I mean obviously it's played now, but it was banned at its time. But scenes from an Italian restaurant is the one. Is the the song from from it. Please, you're gonna say something. No, I no, you you're I just didn't know that about that about yeah. that it was banned. Yeah. It's and of course was of, of course that's what of course the church pulled strings. Why 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 wouldn't they? You know, only a good die young, you know, whatever. Bad, bad message, right? Only the good, only the good get molested young too. Apparently, oh, fuck. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Was that too soon? Not at anyway, all. So, Burn so it down. Billy, Billy Joel uh, scenes from Italian restaurants my favorite because it, it's really like four or five songs into one, and he wrote the ballad of just and he wrote that first, and he wrote that part, and he had to bridge them, and he did a very Beatles move where Martin, you know, George Martin was obviously the fifth Beatle. He could take. This guy, you know, how they have a song where they just the whole second album, half of an album, just transitions and it goes like she came in through the bathroom window in the end, right? That whole that whole thing where they just transition into song to song to song. They're like snippets, no song on its own, just parts that they glued together, and that's what scenes ended up being is he glued it together and had to have this weird and then he clarinet in it. Beatles, I, I happen to like clarinet apparently because cool. Two albums have clarinet in it, which is really fucking weird. No, but it's it's different. I, you know I hate what I mean? fucking clarinet, though. No, it's <laughs> cool, man. It's not like saxophone. You know what I mean? It's different. Yeah, it's different. So, yeah. And it's just a different song because it goes... Dun, 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 dun. It just has these... It's like a roller coaster. The whole song itself is like four songs in one. So it's That's just one cool, of those though. songs. So, Billy Joel. Um, I, you know, it doesn't have piano, man. But, oh, well. Which I can't stand. Right, but you would have missed so many of the other great songs that, that were on, on Stranger. Stranger's probably his best album. So that's number nine. I wonder why he called it that. I wonder why the albums call that. I mean, because I think we'd have to look that up. The he has a song that's so there's a title track called "The Stranger," right? That is correct. What's and, that song about? A and stranger. He does, and he does a reprise of it. I, I'd have to. I'm not like a Billy Joel fight. You're not gonna die in that hill, Joello fight. No, I just don't know what it's oh, 100 fight. fight. Yeah, fight. Well, oh, a, like no, not no. a fight. Like fight. A, yes, yes. Like <laughs> as you're not in a, a file. Of, I'm sorry, you're, you're, a Billy Joel file. Not fight. Ugh. Such a moron. <laughs> no, you're not. Hey. Not allowed, sir. Oh shit. You're now I have to say two nice so things about much myself. Trouble now, bro. I know. No, that. that I didn't say anything. Say what? It. The R word? I, we can't do it. You're right. not gonna join not board the short bus later? Well that I'm always on it riding the short I own the short bus, bro. All right, we gotta cl we're gonna wrap this bad boy up and then split no, this. We got bitch. twenty minutes, fucker. <laughs> we got great. all kinds of honorable mentions right. up in this. Bitch. And that's what we got. Well, we're not done, but we're gonna go to ten. Then we'll go to honorable Numero mentions. <laughs> Number ten, sir, is um my fifth favorite band. I I could not leave them off the list, and I had a hard time picking one album. Um, In Flames, 
out of Gothenburg, Sweden. No one's ever heard of them except me. <laughs> That's not true, bro. That's telling you, dude. I bet the how many members do they have? Of the band, yeah, there are five. Okay, so it's at least six people. Now. At least, yeah. It's so when I go see them live, it's <laughs> the the five dudes and you, and then uh, me, and then they have like uh, the drum tech, and then one other guy. So there's and then one eight, of the girlfriends. Uh, there's still hold on. There's nine people there because there's a guy taking the tickets. So ten. No, the ticket. Ticket. Just one. And ticket. there's one person selling beer. <laughs> so there's ten of us at the a re- little tiny arena. All right, bro. So they like they a, sell out. Don't it's, lie. It's in a tent. Can we be honest? They sell out. Uh, they do y- well. Usually, well, they sell out a two thousand seat venue. Okay. But, well, they play marquee or something. Or yes. What? Okay. But at, you know, in Europe, they'll sell out. You know, oh, yeah. fucking. You know, whatever. Ten, twelve, fourteen thousand, whatever. Anyway, um, they started. They've been around since ninety six. They've had a fucking. 14 albums or some shit. So they started then there's three bands in Gothenburg, Sweden in all started in 96 that started a genre called Swedish melodic death metal. And that's what, that's what the fucking Google, beer Google. It. It's that's what the fucking genre is called. Swedish melodic death metal. That's what SMD. it's called. I, SMDM. I get it. Whatever. I'm, I'm, I already got an, an, an acronym for it. Dude, bro. <laughs> What I'm hearing in, in my cans, what I'm hearing in my cans, it it's disgusting. So please oh, stop. Shit. So, <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, I've been a fan since probably oh two oh three, and um, their sound is amazing. And I one, I have one of their albums tattooed on my leg. So I picked their album called Colony. It's just aggressive and. Um, Ironically, you sent me an article um, six months ago about some astrophysicists, ha- an hour and a half, yes. having a conversation about multiverses and universes and astrophysics and uh, a doctor of like, probably astrophysics. Flobbity flops? About little bit of stuff that I don't understand. She says, so in 2002, when I started... Um, Reaching this, researching this and that and the other thing, I beer Googled it and only 18,000 things came up. But in 2018, when I beer Googled it, 20 million things came up. But in 2002, when I beer Googled it, the majority of the things was Swedish death metal. So you can disregard that. I was like, hey, (laughs) those are my people. I know them. And it was all about the song called Behind Space. And it was about... um, The Astral Plane and the Fourth Dimension, which is exactly what the fucking song talks about. And I was like, holy shit, that's my people. Those are your people. That's, my, that's in flames. It's funny because you wonder who inspired whom. I don't know. Did did the chicken, the egg, or did the egg, the chicken? I I love chicken burritos. Oh, well, chicken anything. Yeah. I like plain chicken. Chicken pot pie. Chicken fights. Chicken. The chicken dance. No, 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 Ill regardless, I do love the Inflames. All right. Even their new shit. So this is it's this is number 10 for me. Go. It's the last it's the last one. This is the when I'm ready to take on the world, I will fuck. This is, is this my, clean in the kitchen? Probably. <laughs> this is the one. This is no, this is the Probably. One. Take on the world, aka clean in the kitchen. <sighs> I had like number 10 had about 82 different albums in it at some point or another. I, cause I just love music so much. I, it's definitely FOMO. I'll be honest. It was at FOMO. Like it, this was not as much who am I bringing as much as who am I losing? Like it felt that way for part of it. I had to start looking and flipping it to who am I bringing? Right? Like that's why Billy Joel's on there as a whole. Billy Joel's a good artist as a whole. Bob Marley's good vibe as a whatever, you know, good, whatever. Would you like to guess? So I'm going to give it to you. It's, I'm going to call it heavy, but I can't call it metal i will say rock industrial heavy ish metal ish industrial is probably the best description but if you don't know know obviously ministry of nine inch nails nailed it bro which one it's nine inch nails ministry is good too by the way that that's a great album but pretty hate machine fucking pretty hate if i'm fucking angry I'm fucking listening to Head Like a Hole, Terrible Lie, oh, yeah. Down in It, Sacrifice, Something I Can Never Have, Kind of Want to Sin, Ring Finger, Sever Flesh and Bone. I mean, come on, fucker. 
oh, the only time that's what I get. It's just that album, just fucking that. I I probably don't know who I am at that when I listen to that. And I don't know why. It's funny. I was not a Nine Inch Nails fan when they came out. I I heard some remix of Down In It or Terrible Line in a club. I think the same club that I mosh pitted at the source. Pitted. Pitted. Mosh pitting. And I am mosh pitting. Hey. Uh, oh, Check that's smart. I was doing the wrong one. I'm I'm supposed to do Adam Sandler. Hello, enjoy your mosh pitting. The goat. I was trying to do the goat. Remember when he, hello, oh, I'm just going to sit here with a rope tied to my neck. Scratching my balls, <laughs> like you remember, you remember the goat? I don't know if you remember that. I'm saying the goat. So that was my number ten, and then we've obviously it, got dude. like Dig it. honorable mention. But that, that's it, guys. So do you want to go through your ten again, please, one more time? Not really. Okay. I don't even want to be here. Uh, we already weren't supposed to be here today, so we already are. Though. Thirty-seven dicks. Do you want me to go through my list or not? Yeah, please. Uh, Iron Maiden live after death. Scream for me, Long Beach. No thumb, by the way. That's love. Tuck the thumb. The thumb means I love you in yes. sign language. Thank you. This means fucking, fucking metal. Rock. And if you're a little bitch who's like 15 and you like fucking, what's that whore's name? You're not allowed to fucking use that shit. And this means eat pussy from Van Halen, yeah, no by shit. the way. You're welcome. Oh, no shit. Yeah, you know. You're dumb, dude. Because you like, you know. You yeah, if you like Selena Gomez, you can't fucking do this, okay? Unless you're really metal, you can't use the horns. Oh, I didn't know that. I mean, you like Pantera. You can use the fucking horns. Yeah, but I can't use the horns at a fucking uh, Tiny Tim. If you go to Country Thunder, put your fucking horns away. I would think horns would be apropos in a country. Well, they're literally horns, bro. Hook them horns. How about this? Can you do this? Is that the Texas UT? No, Texas is this, but that's okay because that's Texas. But that's country, bro. Dude. I'm just, no, that's at the. I'm if you're at a Texas football, oh my god, I fucking quit. I'm with Two Queens Rag Operation. I agree. Operation I don't disagree Mind with Crime. You. That's kind of like Justin Bieber wearing a Slayer shirt. You know what I mean? That's fuck. That's fucked up. What it's if he not, likes Slayer? He doesn't. It's a. That's a fashion thing. Let's not talk about this. Three Rush different stages live. I'm gonna punch you in the face. I haven't done a thing. Oh, you're an instigator. I, it's because you drink, sir. Maybe you should get your drinking under control. Maybe I should get your drinking under control. How are you going to stop me from drinking? No, I should stop pouring, I think. Well, that's for fucking sure. <laughs> you're a terrible bartender. You keep pouring them. Uh, Four, Van Halen, 5150. Yeah, Five. Shutting you off. Uh, New okay. Order Substance. Six, Motley Crue, Shout of the Devil. Seven, Vivaldi, La Stravaganza. Seven, Kill Switch Engage. Alive or Just Breathing. Pantera, yes. Yeah. Vulgar Display of Power and Ten in Flames Colony. Fucking beautiful. Mine, very, very slowly. I'm sorry, I talked too fast. No, because I was going to, instead of saying real quick, sorry, it's a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to say not real quick, bro. I was trying, oh, I was trying to avoid it. So, Bare Naked Ladies, Rock Spectacle, that's a live album. Eagles, Hell Freezes Over, live. Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Ed Sheeran, Multiply, Run DMC, Raising Hell, Beastie Boys, Licensed to Ill, Bob Marley, Exodus, Peter Gabriel, So, Billy Joel, The Stranger. I like to do The Stranger sometimes, but not the way he does it. And Nine Inch Nails, Pretty Hate Machine. Everybody know The Stranger? Hello, Twitter world. If you know your top ten, please leave it at the comments at the bottom of this video. Thank you, sir, for doing this with me. You're welcome. We have honorable mentions. We do. I don't have any. What? Um, I, I could, but... I think yours are way more important. Uh, not at all. Uh, two, real quick, are the um, Tambien. The, the most oh, sorry. also Tambien. <laughs> uh, most all metalheads would say the well, and any writer would say the greatest metal albums of all time are Slayer, Raiden in Blood, and uh, Metallica, Master of Puppets, both from 1986 because they defined thrash metal and they inf they've influenced every metal band to come after them. Um, the other one I almost put in my top 10 is Mudvayne, their first album, LD50, which most people have never heard of Mudvayne, um, out of Illinois, that, that album, they were kind of a Slipknot type band. Um, they came out in 99, they wore makeup and then they took it off for the second album and after, but that album had Dig on it, which is just pure anger and aggression. And I just fucking love it. Lastly, um, that's oh what fuels God, your hate, dude, fire, bro. Well, let me help you tie the rope around your neck. 
How fuck f- yeah. How fucking mad is that guy? Oh. Let me, and then I think the next one is, let me help you walk the plank or something like that. I'm like, fucking Dr. Kevorky. Dude, that dude's fucking mad. Like, oh my God, dude, you need help, bro. (laughs) Anyway, so that my last, it's, it's just a song. I know. Anyway, but the last point is that, um, on the billboards top 500, um, was every Led Zeppelin album. And I, I like Zeppelin. Um, I think I only have a couple of their records, albums, whatever. But I was reading a paragraph on every album, and I think they had a couple in the top 20, but and a couple in the top 100, and, the, and then like two in the top 150. And I was reading the songs, you know, the top three or four songs on each album, and I was like, I could have picked, I could have easily picked five Zeppelin albums. Easily. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, well, and not even Stairway to Heaven, not even Black Dog, not even Rock and Roll, but going to California or um, right. Cashmere or, Cash- oh, fuck. you know what I mean? Like, so there's, and even the songs, no one's Ramble ever, on. Oh, dude. We the fun. For real. Oh, my way. And then, do, 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 yes, do, 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 because oh, fuck. Jimmy Page is an incredible guitar player. Yeah. And Bonham is... Next arguably, to Neil Peart is the one arguably. of the he's the best drummer to ever fucking play drums. He was so different and he played off beat and the songwriting and the, the connection of the band. And when Bonham died, Led Zeppelin stopped. And I admire the shit out of them for that. And they've never they've and even though Jason Bonham, his son, plays with Sammy Hagar. They've never had a reunion. Uh, and start his own band, I think. Yeah, too. yeah. yeah. Uh, they played in they, Bonham. They I saw a, them live. And they do, they play Zeppelin songs, don't they? They do. So it's, I mean, homage. But, let's be honest. Yeah, like, come but, on. It's his dad, for God's sake. But, the, but Zeppelin, those albums are ridiculous. Yeah, How are. good they are front to back. Even the songs that you've never heard on the radio are just like... Power. Yeah. They created the news they created a sound that no one heard before. correct and people always say that um black sabbath created heavy metal what? and i have not i would have guessed most people not. say black ha- oh. black Sabbath that the grandfathers of heavy metal and I, I and i agree with that but zeppelin has a massive influence on, on hard rock on all the bands it, that it, i love you can't get to metal without hard rock i agree and that was the bridge to that i totally agree Absolutely, the British. It was undefinable at the time because there's a lot of as m- most people don't realize the musicianship involved with metal, and they just think it's noise, and yeah. that's okay. You're that's entitled fine. to your opinion. Yeah. But, You're welcome to feel what you want. Yeah, and 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 that's whatever. But Zeppelin w- was amazing and incredibly influential. That's a good one. That is all. Checkmark. I have one, just another album, this honorable mention popped in my head right before we close. Go. Rage Against the Machine. Fuck yeah. Just the first album, just fucking Is that bomb. Bulls on Parade? Bom- no, Bulls on Parade is the next album, okay. actually. Bomb Track. Is that dumb? Um, Killing in the Name of. Yes. Take the Power Back. Is that fuck Settle you, don't for tell nothing. me what to do. Bullet in the Head. Know Your Enemy. Wake Up. Fistful of Steel. And a Fistful of Steel. Uh, Township Rebellion and Freedom. How freedom. apropos is that album now in June 2020? Yeah, I know. Not that album, anime. What is oh, that? Fuck. Was that 20 years old? It's more than more that. than 20. 92. Jeez, so it's, it's 28, 28 years, old. years old. Nothing's changed, dude. Probably recorded, uh, you know, year of or right before. Right? Nothing's so, changed, yeah. bro. And it's always that. I don't know if you can show that, but it's that guy, and it's the monk setting himself on fire. Oh my God. In peace, because that's what it's about. It's not about that's fucking just powerful. That album is would could easily replace Nine Inch Nails in that spot, and not not a ranking way, but just easily because the energy in that album. So Lollapalooza happens. I, I'm not going to do the the harp for the story time, but I do a story a little bit. Lollapalooza. Rage Against the Machine was one of the headliners. They just played 30 minutes of a single note of just like, and they stood naked in front of everyone. No joke. Wow. Stood naked in front of everyone, 30 minutes, just one, just annoying note that was played, then walked off. Did anyone get an erection? I don't, I hope not. Okay. And because it was Philadelphia, it made sense to do it in that 
you know, where we, our rights were given because I had to do a speech and everything. Oh. They, they had their mouths taped or something. There was some pro, whatever, but they did it through in Lollapalooza, right? And you're like, what a fucking douchebag to be fucking political at this point, right? You kind of think because it's a concert. You just, just want to enjoy the show, right? They actually, anybody who had a Lollapalooza concert got a free ticket to their next show when they came back around. So that was really cool that they did that. So they weren't total dickheads about it, but it wow. was a big statement. I'll share the article maybe on the, on okay. the podcast or something, but it's, it was big because it was, you know, Philadelphia is all about where the birthplace, Liberty. birthplace of America, America people, America. but that album's great. That's so. a great point, dude. So anyway, great mention. So there we are. We've got our 10 albums each. Are you ready to get, uh, to get drop shipped? It's like fuck yeah, we're out like of here, bitches. Show, Fortnite, where you fucking and then you yes. get your shit. Yes, we're just gonna get our ten albums and ten movies. You know it. Congratulations, sir. You two champion. I love you, bro. Thank hey, you. Twitter world. Hello, Twitter. World. Leave your comments. Uh, this one's beer Google's correct. Yes, sir. Double E, double O, and double G. Double E O G. All that. All that and a bag of uh, marbles. So thank you so much for uh, joining us. We're going to call it because I think we're going to throw up here in a second. <laughs> I love you. Train Chris. vomiting. I love you, sir. I love you too, Jay. Hey, have a great day. Beer Googles, Beer Googles, Beer Googles, Beer Googles, Beer Googles, Beer Googles. Do a little dance. Double E, double O, double G, 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 double E, double O, double E. Do you ever use punctuation? Uh... Period. <laughs> Just one. That's it. Not a semicolon. I love you, period. Do you love me? Question mark. Question mark. Check mark. Check mark. Oh, goodbye, everybody. Have a great day.